Um, <clears throat> so I will be talking today about uh, serverless Symfony and how to use Symfony Messenger uh, on with PHP on AWS Lambda. So first of all, my name is Mathieu. I come from France, France come from Lyon. Um, and yeah, for about two years now, I've been working with serverless and PHP. Uh, it's been really exciting. Last, last year, most of 2018, I've been working mostly with web applications, APIs, websites. And to do that, I've been working on a project called Breath. Breath helps you create serverless applications. Uh, that was fun, but started, I started in uh, November last year. Um, I worked with other kind of applications, even driven applications, workers. And it's been really, really fun. So I want to try and share what I've learned, uh, what I've used with Symfony Messenger to make this work. Now, um, who has heard about serverless before? I don't want to spend yeah, too much time uh, explaining what it is. Uh, so I will keep it really short. Uh, in the examples I will show, hopefully you will, you will get a sense of what it is and what it means to run code on AWS Lambda. If you want to keep it simple right now in your head, think of Lambda as a way to run containers with PHP in there. So instead of using a server, you put your code on Lambda. And then we'll see what's different. Now, who has uh, used Symfony Messenger? Okay, a little bit. Uh, I will introduce a little bit what Symfony Messenger is. This is a Symfony component, obviously, and it helps you create stuff like workers or um, send messages across applications. Basically, Symfony Messenger is an event bus or a message bus. Now, um, to use it, because I found this component a bit confusing at first. To use it, it's actually not that hard. They made it quite simple. First, you have to create a class, which is the message that you want to send. Here, I will use an example, which is, um, I have a back office. There is a big red button, and the user, um, the admin, will click that button to send an alert. And that alert could be here, that the central line is closed. And we need to publish that on Twitter, for example. So I have a, a class, an object that represents my message. I can have as many properties as I want. And I have a handler. The handler is where I put the code that needs to be run whenever the event or the message is, is uh, dispatched. So in there, I would usually put, for example, my code that calls the Twitter API. And then in my controller, whenever the button is clicked, I use the message bus, this is the last line, to dispatch the message. So this is a convoluted way of calling a function. But um, said like that, it's not really interesting. The thing comes, it becomes interesting when you want to run the handler asynchronously in another process. Because I don't want to call the Twitter API in my controller in the same process of the HTTP request. I want that to run asynchronously so that if the call fails, I can retry it. Or if it's really long, it does not slow down the response time of my application. With Messenger, it's quite simple. I, I mean, it's simple. You have to set up a queue system. So for example, RabbitMQ, I can set that up on my server and configure Symfony Messenger to use it. I configure that with an environment variable and uh, in the YAML configuration, I can route my message to that specific uh, endpoint, which is RabbitMQ. So here in my controller, whenever I dispatch the message now, uh, the handler will not be called. Instead, my message will be sent to RabbitMQ. Now, I need the second part. I need to pick message up, the message up and process it. And again, thanks to Symfony Messenger, it's quite simple. We have a command for that. This is the consume command. So I need to run that on my server, um, usually with a um, process uh, supervisor that will make sure it runs, it does not crash. If it crashes, it restarts. And that's a good way to run jobs in background. So where does serverless fit into that? Where, uh, well, um, when you want to run your worker, you have to set it up on your server. So how about running that code on AWS Lambda? 
Now, um, yeah, forget about that part, sorry. Why do we want to use Symfony Messenger and not just set up queues uh, manually? Because doing background jobs with PHP, it's uh, not something that's really new. Well, Symfony Messenger provides a few things, like serializing messages, our alert triggered class uh, will be serialized automatically by Symfony, so we only deal with objects. That's really cool. Symfony Messenger can handle retries. So if my background job, job uh, tries to publish on Twitter and the API is down, uh, the job will crash. And see, I can configure Symfony to restart the job and retry it for two or three times. But if it still fails after those retry, I can also configure that message to be stored somewhere. That's uh, in Symfony, it's called the, the failed transport. Um, it's a pattern called also the dead letter queue. So it's a good way to, instead of losing the message forever, to have it stored somewhere, we can investigate what went wrong with that specific task and eventually retry it after fixing the bug or after the downtime is finished. And finally, with Symfony Messenger, we can root messages. We can say, I want this message to be sent to RabbitMQ in this specific queue, and this one in another queue that's handled by another process. And I want this message to be executed and, and processed uh, synchronously. So you can do routing like this, which is quite interesting. Now, yeah, what about running the workers on Lambda? So um, <clears throat> if you want to run on Lam PHP on Lambda, um, because there is no official support from Amazon, you have to use a third-party runtime. It's like a Docker image. Um, and that's what Brev provides. Brev provides what you need to run PHP on Lambda. So I will not cover the installation of Brev, but here is an example of how you set, uh, set up the Symfony Messenger integration. It is a composer package. So you install it, you set it up with a bundle thing, and then what you need to change is the destination for the messages. Instead of sending them to RabbitMQ, we need to send them to the queue, the SQSQ. You see, with Lambda, there's a specific integration with Amazon SQS. SQS is Amazon's queue system. It's like RabbitMQ, except it's made by, made by Amazon. And we want to use that. You'll see why. But here we are setting up our queue, to be, our messages to be sent to SQS, okay? We don't change any line of code. Our message will simply be sent to SQS. Now we need to process those messages. And there's a difference here. We are not going to run the consume command. You see, um, SQS and Lambda have a specific integration where um, you don't need to write anything. In Lambda, you cannot run long-running long processes. You cannot run daemons. You cannot uh, run uh, yeah, a process that will, will wait or pull for new messages. You can't do that. The way to run code with Lambda is to have it invoked by something else. And that's exactly what SQS can do. SQS can invoke your code whenever there's a message. So here is a little schema of my user clicking the red button in the back office. The controller sends the message, the alert, into SQS. And then SQS will invoke my code. And then my code can call the Twitter API. So I have a little uh, risky demo. And it's not actually a demo. It's a simulation. It's a project that I've been working, in, working uh, on for a few uh, weeks now. And the goal here is to simulate visually what happens when you run stuff on Lambda and SQS. So as you can see on the left side, I have my queue. I have skipped the back office part, just for simplicity. I have my SQS queue. Um, I don't have arrows here, but imagine that whenever there's a message in SQS, it will trigger my code in Lambda. Lambda runs the PHP code. And on the right side, I have the Twitter API. So Lambda and my code will call the Twitter API. Now let's simulate what happens if I push a message into SQS. And to simulate that, I have created a button. So I can run that several times, just to show you what happens. As you can see, whenever I push a new message into SQS, 
the code is executed on Lambda to process that message. And it's executed immediately. That's because SQS triggers the code. There is no, thing, there is no waiting time. Now, where it gets interesting <coughs> is if I send, for example, 10 messages. I don't have to scale anything. Lambda does that for us. For every new message in SQS, a new container with our code will be booted immediately to handle the message. So just to be clear, one instance of our code, one container instance of Lambda, handles one message at a time. There is no multiple message in, 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 uh, processed in parallel in Lambda. Um, that means that as long as Lambda can scale, we can process many messages in parallel. For example, 100 messages, that works as well and as fast. It's as slow as the slowest message. Now, it may be confusing because usually a queue works where you can send messages and the messages will pile up. But that's because we, have, we are running workers on a machine where we can have only like three or five workers, right? Here on Lambda, I don't have to scale the workers. So that's why it's instant. So that's where Lambda is really, it's really, really interesting for workers. If you have to process a thousand messages, you can do that. It just works. You don't have to scale anything. Now, um, I want to make, make this a little bit interactive because maybe you have questions about what's, what's happening here. Uh, the simulation is really new. That's the first time I'm showing that. So maybe you, there's something not clear. So if you have questions, please, please yeah. What if uh, it's long running process? Sorry? Long running process. Okay, if you, if you have a long running process, like a worker, like a... Worker. Okay, you can't do that. You can't have long running processes on Lambda. Your code has to be invoked by something. Here it's SQS, but that's a really good question. You have to change your code a little bit. I'm talking about not minutes, but for example, 10 seconds. Okay, you can uh, run code for as long as 15 minutes on Lambda. So if you, your worker takes more than 15 minutes for one message, it won't work. But you can go as long as 15 minutes. Here, um, my duration is just really short just to show you, but I can simulate a longer uh, running process. Do I have another question about that? Yes. Um, just a question about the uh, SQS and Lambda, because you said SQS is a queue. Yeah. Technically, when you do plus 100, you have 100 messages in the queue. So why do you have? 100 as well. You should technically take them one by one from Yes, very good question. So, um, by default, Lambda scales up to, and that's the number here, 1,000 1, instances out of the box. So, out of the box, if I have 1,000 messages in SQS, I will have 1,000 workers. If I have 10,000 messages, I will only have 1,000 workers. So, messages, messages will pile up. Now, I can simulate what happens, and you can actually change that, that configuration and say, I don't want to have 1,000 calls to the Twitter API because I will hit the rate limit. So you can change that. And in that case, you can see that messages can pile up and only five workers are doing the job. So you can set any number you want. You can set it to one if you want to, because you don't want to have any process, uh, process in parallel. And you can set it to yeah, 100 if you want to as well. Is there any other question? Yeah. So you had the messenger consume earlier, uh, which typically monitors SQS and picks messages yes. there and reads it to Lambda. What is it that picks messages from SQS and reads it to Lambda? Exactly, yes. How does it work with messenger now since we don't have the consume command? So that's where the breath uh, package, the breath integration comes in. This is how you configure it. So if you create serverless applications with breath at least, you have to configure it using a, a YAML file, which is serverless.yaml. In that file, you can configure many things, but you create functions. Here, I create a function, which is my worker. I point it to the consumer.php file, which I create and I will show just afterwards. So this is the file that will be executed for every message. I can set a timeout of 20 seconds, but it could be 15 minutes. 
I set how many workers I want at maximum, five, but I could say 100. This is how I, do you see my, yeah. How, how I say I want PHP 7.4 with breath. And here I list which events will trigger my code. My code. So here I choose to trigger my code with SQS and I put the ID of the queue that will trigger my code. Now the PHP file, um, if you were to not use the Symfony Messenger integration, you, you can do that as well, but you do have to write the handler and the code that actually picks up the message and processes it. But with the Symfony Messenger integration, you only need to bridge, uh, bridge the, the message from SQS into Symfony Messenger. And that's, it looks like this. What you need to do is bootstrap Symfony. So this is the three lines here are the same as what you can find in index.php or the, B, the bin console command. And then you get from the container the breath service, which is the SQS consumer class. This is a service that is provided by the package and you return it. Breath will know what it is. Breath will send messages to that service and those uh, events will end up in the messenger thing they will be executed. You don't have to do anything more than this. This file is, you have to copy paste it. So I'm looking into ways to avoid having people to copy paste it, but that's the only thing that you need to do. So this is how you make Symfony not ask for messages, but instead receive them. Yeah. So that's effectively your index PHP. File. Exactly, that's the entry point of the application okay. for the, end, the worker. The Sorry? Entry and the exit. Yeah. So nobody asked me about errors. What happened if there are errors? Um, that's where the Symfony Messenger helps, right? We can use retries and dead letter queues. But it turns out that the SQS plus Lambda integration does that already. So with the breath and Messenger package, you don't use the retries from Symfony, you don't use the failed transport from Symfony. Instead, you use those features from SQS. So a little time for a demo again. So I reset everything. Here, I can simulate that the Twitter API is down. To do that, I change the error rate to 100%. This is a simulation thing where every request will trigger an error. So let's see what happens if I send one message into the queue. Hopefully you can see the animation. It failed once, it will fail again, and it will fail a third time. So it's been retried twice. There, it's failed and it's now out of the queue. The message is completely lost. As you can see, I have three failed calls to the Twitter API. I have three failed execution of Lambda and just one failed message in SQS because SQS retried my message. I can, I can change the number of retries that I want. I can set I want zero retries or I can I set 100 retries. But you probably don't want to have 100 retries because if you have a failed message, um, the way Lambda works is that you pay per execution. So if you have a failed message and, it, and you know it will fail and fail again, you don't want to pay for 100 times what you could pay if you only retried once. So two retries and reset. Um, you can see that if I set a 50% error rate, you can see why retries are actually useful. If I send 10 messages, about half of them will succeed, half of them will fail. But the, the part that failed will be retried. Some will still fail and they will be retried. Like we have three failure left. In the end, we have nine messages that were processed successfully and one that completely failed after the retries. Now, this is the retry thing, but we have to have a dead letter queue because here I lost one message in all of this. I need to keep it. So that's the dead letter queue pattern. As you can see, the left side is the same thing, but on the right side, I added a new queue. When I said dead letter queue, it's just a name, then it's just a, a normal queue. Okay. And in that queue on the right side, which isn't connected to anything, this is where the failed messages will go. So I can try again. 
hopefully there will be failed messages. So they will be retried twice. Uh, please fail. Yes. So I have one failure, nine successes, and I haven't lost the, f the message that failed. This is the dead letter queue. Now, as a developer, I probably want to monitor that queue. Hey, there's a message in there. I need to have a look into it. Is there any bug in the Lambda <laughs> thing? Is there a downtime at Twitter? I need to fix things. I'll remove the error right here to simulate that. And then I can take that message and put it back on the original queue. I don't want to have lambdas listening to that queue and, and or do automatic retries because that's what we can do with the original queue. Now, I haven't implemented a way to take that thing and put it here uh, yet, but I can you know, put it back again and this one will succeed. Are there any questions about that? Yeah. Um, just then, uh, notice you can configure lambda to uh, uh, be triggered by up to 10 messages from SQS because you set only one, but you can do 10 at once, which will, will be much more effective. It's harder to handle errors, but really, you really sending messages to Twitter, you don't want to start 1,000 lambdas. Yes. So you can configure lambda to execute one worker or 10 or 1,000. The question is up to you to decide. No, no, no. How, oh, sorry. <laughs> Each lambda can take 10 yes. messages from SQS. Yes, you can, absolutely. That's a very good point. You can, in one execution, process many messages. You can say, I want in one, okay, in one blue thing on, on the lambda side, I want to process 10 messages. So that's something I don't cover here because it's a more advanced use case. When you have only one message per execution of lambda, it's simpler to handle errors. Because the thing when you have lambda handling 10 messages, for example, is if one fails, you have to retry the 10. You can retry only the one that failed, but it's harder and it's, it's more advanced use case. So that's why I don't cover this one. But that's a very good point, yes. <coughs> so uh, the, more, the conclusion here is that you can do very advanced stuff. <laughs> I only show you what's uh, the, like the basic stuff. So that's great. Um, what about routing? Turns out there's a service for that. Sorry, that's, that's a recap. I don't have my... Uh, a future slide here. Uh, that's a recap of the dead letter queue thing. Yes, okay, that's, that's interesting. This one is great. Okay, there's a failure in the Twitter API. I retried it. That's simple. But what if I need to publish um, uh, messages, the notification on Facebook, Twitter, and send emails? Well, if I retry that, let's say uh, the Lambda handler will call fa Facebook and it works. And then it calls Twitter and it fails. Then I have done the job uh, halfway. Should I retry the job and post again on Facebook? Or should I just give up? Should I just do it manually, you know? Yes. So what I do in my code, and I don't know if that's <laughs> correct, I love the returns OK, so SQS thinks everything's processed. But I push by myself back to SQS on what has failed. Yes, you can do that, absolutely. Yep. I don't know if there's a better way. I'm waiting for you to that. <laughs> I won't go uh, on uh, advanced su subjects like that. Yeah, but that, that's a very good option. Yeah. Here, I don't want to use the retry mechanism of Lambda because I don't want to retry Facebook again. So this is where routing is interesting. <coughs> routing will let me run a handler for Facebook, a handler for Twitter, and a handler for the mails. If one fails, it will not impact the rest. To do the routing, there's a service at AWS called EventBridge. Yeah, that's, that's demo time again, EventBridge. So here you can probably guess the difference with SQS. EventBridge can dispatch messages to multiple listeners. This is a message bus and not a queue. A queue can only have one listener because as soon as you pick up a message, the other listeners will not be able to pick it up. With EventBridge, I can have multiple listeners, and all of them will get the message. 10 messages, or 100. Now, as you can see, the way I rendered the EventBridge block is a bit different from SQS. There is no storage in there. This is just routing messages. So let's compare the two. Here in SQS, I will have um, 
So we are, if I send 10 messages here and 10 messages here, it looks the same. But let's say I only have three workers. There will be a queuing system. The SQS has, acts as a buffer. But on event bridge, messages will be lost. Three were correctly delivered to Lambda, but seven were not because Lambda were not able to accept it. So <clears throat> different use cases. Eventbridge routes the messages, SQS stores them and, and um, buffers them. Um, can, can Eventbridge yeah. send messages to SQS? Exactly, yes. That is a good use case that you can have if you want to get the best of both. Um, if we get into the details though, there is a retry mechanism built in, in Lambda. So you can use SQS, but you can actually get the same things out of the box without using SQS. Yes, it gets a bit complex, but it's really great because that means that you can use Eventbridge directly with Lambda without having to set up a queue in, in, in between. You will lose some configuration options, like you can only have two retries and the delay between each retry is a bit more constrained. But it's, in some cases, it's really good. And you can have a dead letter queue system as well. Um, do, you, do I have any question about Eventbridge as well? Yes. So there's also a <coughs> Very good so question. Yeah. So what's the that's a good question. I forgot to mention SNS. If you've used AWS, SNS is probably more popular than Evanbridge today. Um, if I sum it up, Evanbridge is better on every point than SNS. It does the same thing, but more, except if you have a large number of events. SNS is very real time. You can have millions of messages going through it. Uh, Evanbridge is, uh, you can have up to 400 messages per second, I think, something like that. So it's, um, yeah. But other than that, even bridge is much better. Is there any other question about this? Yeah. Just on the previous slide, where you had one message handler doing three separate things. Yes. Um, Facebook, Twitter, and, and mails. Yes. And then, and then how would that, how that affect how you use Lambda? I think I have it here. Yes, that's the one. So you can have Evanbridge trigger messages in multiple Lambdas. And that's what you would do here. You would have one message sent by the back office, and the same message <coughs> will be sent to all three Lambdas at the same time. So each Lambda executes separately. And with the breath integration, and the symphony integration, sorry, you, there is no difference in your code. Um, your, I mean, your uh, code will be executed on, on the, um, yeah, it makes, sorry, yeah. yes. And then does it, uh, does it retry that kind of, let's say Facebook fails two times, does it retry Facebook twice and form the event bridge if that one fails, but the other one yeah, so that's a good question about retries and failures here. Um, so wh what you can do is put SQS in front of every Lambda that you have. Yeah. But you can do it simpler by using uh, what I've mentioned earlier is the integrated mechanism of Lambda, which has, Lambda has a small queue inside of Lambda actually. And uh, whenever you send a message, to, whenever Evanbridge sends a message to Lambda, it gets into that small queue and there is a retry mechanism in there. So you can use that retry mechanism without having to set up SQS, but it's more limited in features. So it depends on the use case. Yes? How does the money cost and resource cost scale when you're scaling to thousands? Um, so this is a very good question, but it's hard to answer because um, basically, if I sum it up, you pay for what you use, for the time your code is running. You also pay for the number of messages that will come through. Uh, I think, if I remember correctly, Evanbridge is like $1 per million of messages. 
Um, but I think you need to look into the numbers and, and do the calculation for each application because it's really different from every application. Usually, I tend to say that it's really cheap unless you have a very large number of events to process. Yeah. Well, you need to configure things to get out until Yes. Something that can happen <coughs> is if you mess up the retries, you have a message that will be retried and retried over all night long. That can be painful. I've seen, I mean, it's uh, still $100 bills, but it's still painful a little bit. So you, as I mentioned, you have the retry mechanism from Lambda itself, and you can, there's a delta queue mechanism in Lambda as well. So if Twitter fails, I can set it up to be retried twice, and if it fails, still fails, the message will be sent to the queue. Here, I need a real queue, but then I can do the same thing as earlier, inspect the message, look into whatever went wrong and replay it later. So if we sum it up <coughs> with this integration and with those services on AWS, um, the only thing left where Symfony is interesting is the serialization mechanism because it can basically, you can interact with objects. You send an object, you get an object back into your handler. That's really valuable. Um, now, in the future, here I'm talking about future things, but in the future, there are things coming up at AWS that are interesting on that front. Turning it, an object into JSON and a JSON file, a JSON string into an object is something that Breath could support out of the box. That's something I'm, I'm exploring at the moment. Just to give you an example, you have your custom events, like the one I did, but there are also native AWS events. For example, I can watch a bucket, not actually watch it, but have events triggered whenever a file is uploaded on S3, and that can trigger my code. This is how you write it with Breath. You write a class. This is not a Symfony Messenger handler. This is a Breath native handler. This is a class that you extend. And what you get in there is an object with auto-completion, with types and everything. This works well because this is an official Amazon event. So it's easy for Breath to map it, map it to a class. We are in the process of merging a pull request to have events for DynamoDB as well. So when, for example, you have a new line inserted into, into a database, you get an event and an object that describes it. But what's really interesting is trying to go further than that and map custom events. And recently, Amazon announced the EventBridge Schema Registry. This is, again, a service where we can create schema or types. Or we can type events that are dispatched through EventBridge. This is really interesting because it will let us um, make sure that if, if you have microservices, for example, and you exchange messages between applications, it's really hard to say, I will send you something that looks like this with these properties, with these types, and then the other application trusts that the documentation is up to date. The schema registry comes and solves that by making and enforcing the fact that the message has a specific shape. EventBridge also can generate code from the schema. So you can generate TypeScript objects or Java classes from those uh, schemas. I'm looking into things to, like this for breath, like having an event, a JSON event, and be able to generate a PHP class that you can use in your code, that would be really interesting. So this isn't ready at all yet, but this is really interesting to see where AWS is taking us with the serverless applications. I'm wondering if um, we are not seeing like the replacement of the framework at the code level and seeing a new kind of framework at the infrastructure level. So is it a good thing? Uh, we'll see. I'm, I'm not sure, honestly. Um, is it mature? It is usable, but it's not as mature as, as Symfony Messenger, that's for sure. So it's really interesting to look into it, to start to use it and build tools around it. But Symfony Messenger still stays very interesting if you want something that's really mature. It's also interesting to consider different use cases. If you have an event, that you want to send on EventBridge and reuse and, and consume in the same code base, Symfony Messenger and its serialization mechanism is perfect. 
because the code that publishes the event knows about it when it receives. So that's perfect. But if you send events across services, across applications, then Symfony Messenger, uh, it's harder uh, with different code bases to match events to objects. So that's where the schema registry could be really useful. OK, so uh, <laughs> hopefully you managed to uh, understand a few things. Um, if you want to get started with Bref, you can also create APIs and websites that's described on the documentation. This is the GitHub repository. Um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them uh, now or later. And um, if, you're, uh, if you want to get help, I work for a company called Nog, which I, I created. And I help people create serverless PHP application and migrate to serverless. So I'm really happy to help as well. Thank you. <laughs>